Well, today is processing day. These grow outs are going to the freezer. Hey guys, welcome back to another slightly rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or heck, even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. And uh, today is the day I'm going to get these guys processed. Now, I've had a lot of questions lately about what do you do after you process the rabbit to prepare it for either cooking or to prepare it for putting it in the freezer? So I'm going to show you those steps that I take today, but I got to get these guys, you know, butchered and, you know, wrapped up, ready to go first. And YouTube's a little bit picky about how they, you know, they don't like to show those kinds of videos where you actually show, you know, butchering an animal or any of those kinds of things. So I can't show that part on video, but what I will do is I'll go show you my setup, what I'm going to, how I'm going to do this. And then uh, we'll come back after I get these guys processed and uh, we'll show you from there on. All right, so this is my setup for uh, processing rabbits. What I've got here is just a couple of uh, sea clamps clamped onto my deck railing itself. I've tied a couple of pieces of paracord, made some slip knots out of them. So, uh, you know, it's pretty easy. What I'm going to do basically is, uh, you know, dispatch the rabbit itself and then I'll hang it by its hind legs right here. So it hangs, you know, pull these down tight, so it's hanging down tight over the top of this trash can. And I'll be able to, uh, you know, go ahead and skin it at that point, uh, remove the, you know, internal organs and all the waste goes into the trash can. I got a couple of bowls here to catch, you know, the rabbit ears I'm gonna be saving. Um, dehydrate those out for dog treats. If you need a, a video on how to do that, I've got a video I'll link right up here or I always get mixed up. Maybe it's on this side that I'll, I'll link that video so you can see how I make the uh, rabbit ear dog treats. And uh, then I'll also save the rabbit's feet to make some uh, rabbit foot keychains because why let them go to waste? And again, I've got a video for that I'll link up here to show you how to, you can make a, a keychain out of the rabbit feet, how you can preserve those. Um, I will save the liver as well because I do like to eat the liver. Um, it, you know, if you're a fan of liver, it, uh, it is a great liver. It's very mild tasting, not nearly as strong as beef liver, um, and surprisingly large for as uh, small as rabbits are. So a couple of bowls, one to catch the rabbit itself, let those rest in, I'll fill up with some water, and then the other one for the uh, other, you know, the internal organs will go in with the rabbit, the, uh, the internal organs I'm saving, the feet and the ears will go in the other bowl. And then uh, you got a couple of these, you know, just uh, neoprene gloves here that just make the process a little bit less cleanup involved. So I'll be wearing those. Um, a good sharp knife and a pair of pruning shears. These are great for cutting through bone, like the, uh, the legs, um, cutting the neck bone, you know, those kinds of things. So that's what I use for that. So uh, anyway, hopefully that process makes sense. Um, it's not terribly difficult. I have done a video on how to butcher rabbits. Um, but it got marked as adult content, so if you want to watch that, I'll link it up here. You can go back and watch that, but you will have to be over 18 and signed in in order to be able to get to that video to watch it. Uh, but the process is pretty much the same. It hasn't changed. So let me get on it, and uh, once I get these guys processed, we'll uh, go ahead and come back and uh, show you what I do with them after that. Oh, we'll get you. We'll get you. Okay. Okay. Max, go on. Go on. Oh, Oh my goodness, jumpy rabbit. This is uh, definitely the worst part of raising rabbits for meat. Don't like this part at all, but it's a necessary part. If you're gonna produce your own meat, you've gotta go through this part of the process as well. All right, so I got these uh, rabbits processed, got them all cleaned up, and they're ready to go in the fridge and to rest. Now that's what I do at this point. Don't. What I will tell you is you, if you're gonna cook a rabbit right away after processing it, you wanna do it within a half an hour probably. Uh, what happens to the meat once the animal is dead? Within a half an hour to an hour, rigor mortis sets in. And that's, you're probably familiar with that. That's when an animal dies, it gets very stiff. And this, these aren't too bad right now, but it's starting to get rigor mortis. It wants to, uh, you can't bend the legs very well. They're kind of stiff. They're kind of hard to bend. So that is the uh, first sign of rigor mortis. The whole animal will stiffen up. And that usually is going to last on an animal the size of a rabbit. The bigger it is, the longer it lasts. But on the animal the size of a rabbit or a chicken or something like that, usually you're looking at 24, 48 hours, and then the rigor mortis leaves the meat. You don't want to cook it or freeze it when it's in the midst of rigor mortis. Really, it's best to let it rest until rigor mortis hits and then passes. 
what happens is the uh, when rigor mortis hits the animal, the, the tendons tighten up and everything tightens up. And if you cook it during that or even freeze it and then cook it later, it makes the meat much, much tougher than if you were to let it rest and let that rigor mortis leave the meat. When the rigor mortis leaves the meat, the tendons start to loosen, the proteins start to break down a little bit, and it leaves you with much better taste and a much tender, uh, much more tender meat. There we go, if I can get that out. So if you've ever tried to butcher a rabbit and then cooked it same day or even stuck it right in the freezer and then cooked it later and noticed it was very tough and, and very hard to eat, that's probably why. Um, me personally, I like to dry age my meat, which just means I don't, I don't soak it in water. I've dried all these off. And I just pile them in a bowl. Ideally, the, the best situation would be to hang them so that they can get ventilation and, and air all the way around them. But I, I don't have a big walk-in cooler to do that in. So I just pile them all in a bowl, cover it with some aluminum foil so you're not just looking at raw meat and nothing gets on there. Stick it in the fridge. And I let it sit in there for 24, well, I usually let it sit in there for 48 to 72 hours. But really, you only need to wait until the rigor mortis leaves the meat, which is generally going to be 24 to 48 hours. Um, you know, if you do let it rest longer than that, there is some belief and some science to this that the proteins go through further changes, which adds additional flavor, adds additional tenderness to your meat. I don't know how much, I know that that's true in steak, in beef, and, and some of those other things, but in a rabbit or a chicken, I don't know how much of a difference that makes. But again, you know, you can let it rest for up to a week probably in the fridge. As long as the temperature is right, you want to keep it cool. You don't want it to be, you know, room temperature because it'll start to rot at that point. It won't be resting. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now you could do that in a cooler. You could do it wherever. Lots of people will uh, wet uh, age their meat, which means that they will submerge it in salt water. That's pretty common. Um, their belief there, and what you'll hear most of the time, is that it draws the, the blood out of the meat. There's not a lot of blood in the meat, honestly. Um, if you do, you know, douse it in water or soak it in water, yeah, there's going to be some blood that le that gets in the meat or the, in the water itself. The real benefit to salt water is is a brine, and it what it does is it infuses the meat through the process of osmosis to add moisture to the meat. I personally do not think that it, it's that effective when it comes to aging your meat. Um, I think it's very effective when it comes to cooking your meat. So I do like to brine my meat especially chickens and rabbits, things that can be a little bit dry uh, before I cook them. But I prefer to do it before I cook them, not during the aging process. So my process is they get piled up in a bowl. Um, I cover them with some aluminum foil, stick them in the fridge, wait 48 hours, 72 hours, something like that. Make sure they're not stiff. They're not in the midst of rigor mortis. And then I vacuum seal them and they go right in the, fr or re right in the freezer or I cook them at that point whichever I'm going to do. Now, if I do decide to brine them, that's when I would go ahead and brine them before I cooked them. But I don't brine before I stick in the freezer. Um, I, I freeze and then I brine for 12 to 24 hours before I cook. Hopefully that makes sense. I didn't get too jumbled up there. Um, but that's the way that I do things. I like to use a vacuum sealer. You can wrap them in butcher paper. You could put them in you know, Ziploc bags and push the air out of them if you want. I just find a vacuum sealer is pretty convenient for me and it does cut down on the amount of uh, freezer burn that you get on the meat. So that's what I choose to use. So anyway, hopefully that clears a few things up. I know I've had a few questions about how do you go about doing that? What do I mean by dry aging? That's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this video. And uh, as always, God bless.